Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to take on another one of Scott's reels that he found at a flea market. And uh, this one is an Ocean City reel. And, uh, well, it's uh, showing its age, but its age is, well, the last time it would have been produced is 1957. So, uh, you know, go do the math, right? 60 years old almost, right? So, or, so the uh, reel is an Ocean City 950. And I have a 949. Primarily, the difference is the frame width, and uh, this one's in a little bit of better condition, but that's okay. A couple of things going on here. We see that the reel hasn't been serviced in a while. There's a lot of old grease and the like accumulated around the outside, which has bled out over time. We notice that we have the free spool releases mounted incorrectly. The handle is a little tight, but not terrible, and overall, it just needs a good cleaning. And well, it's uh, kind of missing a tooth too. Now, fortunately for Scott, <coughs> ahead of time I went, I do have a replacement post. I guess I must have had one of these at one time that broke somewhere along the line. Well, save the post and well, we can insert that there and complete the reel so that uh, it works well. <coughs> well, we're going to take off the exterior pieces and parts. As we do that, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button to uh, let you know when those videos are being posted. I try to post daily. And, uh, well, you'll see reels that I work on kind of look like you're working over my shoulder or looking over my shoulder as I work in my shop. Those uh, videos include salt water, fresh water, conventional, bait casting, spinning, everything in between. And if you like the art of reel repair and hobby of uh, working on your own stuff, well, then it's a, uh, a channel designed for you. All right, well, you saw I just took off what is probably one of the more convenient features of an Ocean City reel. It has the handle wrench right in the handle. Go figure. Well, it mounts over the handle screw and screws into the back end of the handle. Take that off, and then you can remove the nut for, or the screw. I keep calling it a nut because of the, the face on it, but it's actually a screw. And when I take the pieces and parts off, well, I like to put them into a parts tray. I use the bottom of a fast food container to do that. All right, we're going to take the handle now. I use steel wool and 4-0 uh, is the finest of the steel wools. That's what I'm using here. I use a little bit of metal polish. I use an automotive chrome polish. And I just do that to get the, the old uh, greening and some of the other things off of there. These are pretty sturdy pieces. And one of the things you should know, I showed you the, the 949 before, this is the 950. Almost all of that series of Ocean City reels that start with the number 9, they're pretty much interchangeable mechanically. There's a couple of differences, but for the most part, if you learn to work on one of these, you can work on all of these. I'm going to chrome plating on that. It cleaned up nicely. I mentioned the chrome polish I'm using. I use a uh, Turtle Wax chrome polish. It's just an automotive chrome polish that uh, you should find helpful. Okay, we're going to remove the star adjuster. And you can see that the reel has not been maintained in a while. And there is a lot of the old greases and that have come to the surface. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing while we got that here. A lot of the, the servicing of a reel is really just it's cleaning, it's inspecting, it's removing the old greases putting in fresh greases and oils, and uh, doing the service so that it lasts you. The, uh, this reel is Survivor. I don't know. I know Scott picked it up at a flea market. I don't know why it found its way to a flea market. Sometimes folks find these things in estate sales or the like. Somebody's hung on to a reel that maybe was their father's or sister's or brother's or whatever. And then at some point in time, well, that kind of lose track of it, and next thing you know, they're in a flea market. All right, we got a lot of stuff. I'm just going to leave it at that stuff. I'm going to use a penetrating oil first. I'm just going to lay it on there, see if we can't dissolve some of the case grease like that. While it's dissolving, I'm going to remove the screws. And this one has a, a fairly small size screw head, so I'm going to use a micro driver to take those screws out. When you take them out, lay them on the table. You want to make sure that they're all the same size. And I know this reel. I know that they're not the same size. 
so this is more for illustration. Go ahead and take those out. Your, your long cross posts, these have a longer screw, and the real seat has a shorter screw. That's so that the screw does not protrude through that real seat and catch the line. Well, these are sticking in the little cavities. They're loose, but they're sticking in the little cavities. We should be able to remove the side plate. We can. One of the things I'm going to do if they didn't fall out already, yeah, you can see the smaller screws here. I'm trying to find the other one. And we're going to take those and we're going to put those into a parts tray. Now I mentioned I do have an additional one to replace the one that was missing. And I'll do the same thing here that I've been doing with all the others. I'm going to take the steel wall and I'm going to run it over it. See if we can't get rid of a good cleaning. You never restore the nicks. You won't restore the, the chrome loss. But you can do pretty good in terms of restoring the shine that remains. All right, so this is a typical layout for an Ocean City reel. They, um, they use an interesting kind of a jack feature. It's run off of the free spool lever here. There's a connection here, a little hook and eye kind of a deal. That's going to release the worm gears and the like. And we have a bridge, which is a push-through bridge. One of the nice things about this bridge is that the anti-reverse dog spring is mounted right to that bridge so you're really not wrestling too much with the uh, the reinstall of that. Well, we've got two things to do here. One of them involves the cleaning. We've left that um, penetrating oil for a while now. It seems to be loosening up. I'm going to use the steel wool to see if I can't help. Some of this is actually so dry we're going to use that, that little screwdriver to see if we can't uh, move it along that way. But this is your chance to clean up the case and get as much of that old stuff off of there as you can. Now I'm going to try and reset this eccentric. So whoever put this on, this is a common thing that you find. Uh, they take this off for whatever reason. And then when they go to reset it, they find out that the, the piece is, is overextended and they can't put it in correctly. Well, the way to do that is to find the balance point on these. It's usually right about the center. Just fell off there, which is wonderful. It's going to save me some trouble. I want to clean under there. I'm going to use a cotton swab. And again, I'll go back to that uh, penetrating oil, see if we can't that as clean as possible. There we go, it's clean now. We'll put a little bit of oil inside that. And then we're going to re invert the lever so that it sets the right way. This happens on more than just the Ocean City reel. It happens a lot on pen reels. Uh, and a lot of them that use these free spool uh, levers like that do seem to get mounted backwards when the owner or whoever was servicing it couldn't figure out how to, to square that up. Well, you just learned how to square it up. Just find the balance point. Once you do that, we've cleaned it, we've lubed it, we put it back together, and now it's facing the right way. I'm just going to do just a little bit more of cleaning here as best I can to get that little residual there. As I mentioned, a lot of the servicing of a reel is, is all about just getting it clean and uh, re-lubed. All right, well, we could probably do this all day. I think we did a pretty good job here. All right, let's go underneath then. We'll show you the mechanics of it. Now that metal piece is off, I'm going to use that metal cleaner one more time. try to clean the frame up of the old greases that are on that. And this frame will clean up nice. Again, this, this material is in very nice condition for the age of the reel. This one has a little uh, plastic inset in it. I don't remember seeing that on too many reels, but it's on this one. So there you go. Alright, that cleaned up nicely. Let's go over to the business end of this. So to remove this reel then, 
can see I'm gonna have to do some cleaning on the shoulders here. We'll get to that in a moment. Let's get to the, the business end of that. So if you have one of these, start by loosening up this screw. Now you don't have to take the screw out all the way. This is a hook and eye, almost comparable to what you would find on a, on a uh, door or something. Once that is up and out of the way, like that, go ahead and pull the jack out. It just pulls right out. Behind that, you're going to find the yoke and the pinion gear. So go ahead next, push down on this, and then you should be able to free the spool, free the inner gear, there's a carrier there, and get these two springs into your parts tray as quickly as you can. Now if you have a an Ocean City reel that has a anti-reverse dog that's mounted with a spring inside the case and there are plenty of them, you're going to need to remove one of these posts. Since this one has the anti-reverse spring on the bridge, you do not need to remove these posts. If you do remove the post, be aware that there is a a channel cut into these posts right there you can see it as my screwdriver is holding it that channel needs to face inward they need to oppose each other to accept the wings from this they're going to go in those two slots there if they're not set properly you won't get this jack back into the, the reel these two um, pieces with nut heads are actually sleeves so you do not need to remove the top two screws on this reel when you're servicing it. You only need to, be, to move the bottoms. And as I remove those bottoms, I, uh, I hold that back screw there. Sometimes you're going to need a, a um, pliers to do it. Sometimes you can just kind of get lucky. And the tension on your hand will be enough to do that. Okay. I'm going to take these parts and put those into a parts tray so I don't knock them around. We'll come back to them. That's first screw. Second screw is on this side. While I'm doing that, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, if you maybe you're working on one and you're stuck, maybe you want to learn about one reel, uh, whatever it may be, if you leave those in the comment section, I do try to answer them. All right, those two screws are out. Remember, we left the two up top. They didn't need to take those out. This whole assembly is going to push out now or fall out. That's the assembly that contains your anti-reverse dog. Here's your two collars. This is your main gear with the drag washers in it. And we've got a little bit of a, uh, well, of a greased up mess in here. That's one of the reasons why I wear this protective glove is because the, uh, the greases and the oils and that that have been in there for some time. I have no idea what's in there. And if I can keep it off my hands, I try to do that. I'm going to grab my little screwdriver now. The only thing I do with this screwdriver is scrape. But it just seems to be the right size for a scraper. I'm going to try and loosen up as much of that as I can. And I think at the end of the day, Scott's going to find he has a nice reel here. I like this series. This, this series is wonderful for inshore ocean. Uh, in the northeast here, we have a couple of varieties that this works very well with. One of them is a, um, a summer flounder, sometimes it's referred to as fluke. We call it fluke here. Sea bass, blackfish. It, uh, it's got a nice nice setup. It's a strong reel. And I just uh, got discontinued when Ocean City went out of business. Well, it actually didn't go out of business for a while, but it got acquired by True Temper in 1957. So if you find a badge that says Ocean City on the reel and not True Temper, you'll uh, know that the reel was made before 1957. You'll also know uh, if it says uh, True Temper, that's the same reel. They didn't change the designs on most of them. And uh, if, if you're dealing with a True Temper 900 series reel, if they exist, then uh, it's just as good as working on an Ocean City one. So and I get that a lot of times. I get a lot of questions on these because Ocean City was a big trade reel manufacturer. So they made a lot of these reels identical in almost every way except what is read on the outside of the, the reel. 
Uh, it would often read Sears or J.C. Higgins or, uh, well, I've seen them for Macy's, for Daviga. I've seen them for a whole host of them. And they're all basically the same reel. Just the outside color might be different. The badge of the name is different, but the internal workings are essentially the same reel. There's a, I guess, a collector sub sub market for collectors out there that just likes to collect all of the trade reels that Ocean City made. Kind of fun. All right, pretty much done with the cleanups here. Pay our, pay our attention to the bridge structure. This is an adjustable bearing on the spool here. You can see the slot. If you want to tighten or loosen or center the spool, you can do it with that, uh, bit, that piece there. The cleanup is essentially complete. We're going to turn our attention now to doing a little bit of re-grease. But first, we're trying to find my brush. I guess I left my brush off camera. To those of you that are wondering how that eccentric spring works, here's your look at that. That eccentric spring sits on a post. There's a right angle here on the turn. Uh, it's not a right angle. It actually goes in and up. Not quite a right angle, but it sits in a groove in the eccentric, wraps around the post, and then wedges into the side plate here. So if you have a long tag after this right angle here, you're going to find it goes in and up, and it'll ride on the groove. All right, let's uh, let's go over to that bridge. Show you the bridge. I think this is in a whole lot better shape than it was. I get questions all the time. Ocean City's out of business. Where do I get drag washers for it? Well, surprisingly enough, most of the Ocean City reels can accept a pen reel drag washer. So. These kind of look like the 155s. They might be the Model 60s. I'm not sure. But rest assured, if you do have a problem with the drag washers, you uh, can generally find a substitute in the, um, in the pen wheels. I think we're going to have a problem with these drag washers, so let's go see. These are the originals. Again, they're 60 years old. If they're, oh, look at that. They're flexible. If they don't flex like this, if you've got an issue with the drag washer where it's brittle and it's going to uh, break, well then you need to replace it. All right, I'm going to hose down the inners of this. Let's see if I can get this pin out. Sometimes this pin just doesn't want to come out on these old reels. But that's holding a, a shaft on right now. Very similar in nature to the, oh, this one is going to cooperate, make, make a liar out of me. So you can poke the pin out. I just heard that uh, sleeve fall. I guess we'll find that in a moment. One of these. And uh, we're going to clean up underneath here. Well, the world is safe again. Here's our piece. We're going to go ahead and put that piece back in there. We're just going to complete the servicing of the drag washers. And a question I often get asked is, what is this series? How does this go back together again? So let's start with our bridge. There's a felt pad in this, so you don't want to poke all the way through. But the felt pad in there holds the, the oils when you go to put the oil through the cap. Just clean it on both sides. Take your grease brush, put a little bit of grease onto the post, then reset the post, and when you reset this post, make sure you pull the anti-reverse dog back so that the post goes all the way onto the bridge and that there are no gaps. Then push your spring, or push your pin back in and make sure that it clears the side. If it doesn't clear the side, when you go to put the the gear on, it won't go on properly. Here's your gear. We want to make sure that it's clean. One of the things I like to do with the gear is get a hard brush, wipe it through the teeth of the gear, make sure it's 
sure it's nice and clean. Check the teeth for orientation. These are all in good condition. Nice and clean. And then we can go ahead and take our fishing reel grease. In this case I'm using pen precision reel grease. And I'm going to just kind of scatter shot it. You don't have to get it in every tooth. But get it greased up nicely. I'm going to go ahead and put the main gear back on. I see both of those collars have joined each other on the bench right now. That's okay. We have a six drag washer set. We have two that are rectangular in the center. They're called keyed washers. We have one in the middle. It's called an ear washer. And we have three fabric. There's the leather. This is your set. You start with a hard washer. Put a little bit of grease on that. Then the first of the keyed washers, make sure they're clean and smooth. If there's any burrs or pitting or anything like that going on, make sure that you change that out. I'm going to put some drag grease on here. The whole idea behind grease is to just keep it flexible. These are permeable washers. You want to make sure that you can keep them nice and filled with grease. That way they don't dry out. All right, that's the second. Here's the third one now. I use my gloved hand to wipe that grease around just so it gets a good coating of it. And then we'll put the top washer on. Now the top washer, because it's been exposed, is tarnished, but it's not, uh, not dirty or anything like that. All right, that's your, your gear set. Turn it, make sure your anti-reverse dog is working. And then uh, let's go back and, uh, and finish this up then. We're going to take that assembly now. We're going to put both of those little studs in. We're going to center that into the side plate. And we're going to press those two studs into the holes to accept the screws. Turn that around. Okay, I just took a moment to sort through the screws. Unfortunately, I didn't put them into the corners like I normally do when they get commingled. So I wanted to make sure that I had the right ones. I'll go ahead and tighten those down. So Ocean City reels are very dependable reels. For some reason, and probably that they went out of business, they're, they're not as collectible as the pen reels. That doesn't mean that they were inferior. And interestingly enough, when Ocean City was formed back in the 1920s, it was a premier and an expensive line of fishing reels. And Penn, which was also located in the Philadelphia area, uh, the, the owner of Penn uh, worked for Ocean City before he went out and formed his own company. And he actually formed his own company to deliver a, a, a less expensive reel that uh, basically everybody could afford as opposed to uh, well, like the Ike, Ike Walton reels of Ocean City early on, they were kind of viewed as elitist and pretty expensive reels for the time. Well, that's uh, kind of how Penn took the market share from Ocean City. They became more affordable. And, well, very quickly, uh, Ocean City could uh, was in a deficit and pretty much couldn't catch up after that. Okay, we wanted to complete the cleanup of that ferrule. The ferrule gets a washer behind it, or on top of it. And we have that star adjuster goes on next. And this one is one of those annoying things with an Ocean City reel. Sometimes these are going to start spinning that shaft. But one of the things Ocean City did was they put two slots in this gear sleeve. So get a screwdriver if it becomes problematic. Put the screwdriver into the slots. And then turn it while you anchor that piece. You can see the slots here with the razor blade, right? Just use the slot, the wide screwdriver to anchor it that way to turn down your, uh, your piece there. All right, I think we have enough now that we can <laughs> return these rings the way they were. And uh, put this and of onto the side plate. Let's grab that side plate structure. We're going to just run some 
steel wool across the bars here. These are tarnished, but they're not terribly beat up other than metal loss. Same thing here. These are not as as nice as the other side was for whatever reason. So I'm just going to use a light buffing. And I guess there's always a question about how much patina and all that other stuff you want to leave. This reel's not collectible. Or not very collectible, I guess. This one deserves to go fishing again. So take care that it's not going to be ruined. But I don't, uh, you don't need to go much further than that. All right. I'm just going to grab that other bar that I had that's laying around here somewhere. It's in my parts tray, go figure. I'm going to put the bar where it's missing. So if you have an Ocean City reel that breaks, I just got this question in, it came in my email. Uh, are there parts that are interchangeable? There's a lot of parts on Ocean City reels that are interchangeable. And uh, the question that they had, they had a, a Bay City 112 and the Model 113, which is the wider frame. And they wanted to know, uh, will it work? Well, for the most part, they do work. And uh, you can swap them out. So if you have uh, an Ocean City reel that for whatever reason has uh, broken, it doesn't hurt to save the pieces. It's going to be hard enough to find used pieces, so save them, at least for a little while, and uh, you'd be surprised that you may just be able to save another reel by holding on to those pieces. Well, we're going to do this again with the alignment of the, the little gasket and the uh, frame part. Here's our pick to set that up. We've pretty much taken care of the gear side. These aluminum uh, spools, they just plain pit. There's not much you can do about those. Just have to accept it. I've seen some folks have buffed it out with a Dremel tool. I guess you could do that. All right, now we want to line that up. And I'm just going to grab at least one screw to get this thing started. And then we'll just finish this reel off. We'll give it a test. We'll see how we did. And hopefully this reel is going to have a second uh, second chance here. All right. And the long screws go in the cross posts. The short screws go down below in the reel seat. These reels are very high quality reels. They have a mixed reputation, as I mentioned, but for the day, they were very nice reels. I can remember my dad fishing with them, and uh, I never let them down. We would go on those uh, charter boats, head boats, whatever you want to call them. He had a wider version like this one, and uh, it uh, caught its good share of fish in a day. All right, one more here. So what have we done so far? Well, we showed you how to take the entire reel apart, how to service the gear side. We showed you that if you're lucky, you can find a replacement bar to restore that. And then we showed you how to clean it up. This one had a lot of dried grease leaking out of it from time. Showed you a little bit about the, uh, the innovations on the handle, where you have the wrench that ties right into the handle. And uh, with any luck, this one's going to go fishing again. All right, so this is always fun, trying to match up the handle itself with that seating hole, but I guess after you do it a while, it kind of works. And that's it. So let's, uh, this is in gear now. Let's give it a drive. That's a little tight. You want to come over and open up the bearing a little bit. Now we've got free spool. Look at the spin. Spins beautifully. There you go. With a little bit of use after sitting around all this time, it's going to uh, free up. It's freeing up right now. I can just feel it. It's going to free up, spin nicely. Scott, you got a winner here. I don't know. I'm going to assume you didn't pay very much for it, but you got a winner. Put some line on it, take a fish, and go get some nice fish. Well, to everybody, I hope you've enjoyed that. I, gotta, I guess I got to tighten down my drags here. To everybody, please stay safe, 
stay well and stay watching. To our first responders, thank you for all it is that you do to keep us safe. And to everyone, have a great day. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, wishing you well.